Citizens. My name is Alex Gregus, and I want to welcome you to the Finding Lost Civilization series. Now, this series is dedicated to visiting ancient sites that time has long forgotten, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to visit some sand dunes along the seashore, which was once an ancient habitation site, and I'm going to show you some things that I observed on this sand dune that will help us identify that ancient man once lived at that site. I know today is going to be a fun adventure and I invite you to come trek with me. It's a beautiful day, and for many years, I used to walk this beach, and I thought to myself, nature is so beautiful. I would pass by these sand dunes over here, and as I said, I focused on what nature was showing me. But I did not take a close enough look to be able to go beyond my initial impression. Right here is a sand dune, you'll see right over here, next to the beach. Now years ago, when I used to walk through here and I would see these seashells right here, you can see them, my initial impression was this is as a result of the rising and lowering of the sea levels and they were left behind here thousands of years ago. Well, these shells that we're seeing right now were deposited here hundreds if not thousands of years ago but this is the remains of an ancient Native American village site. And what we're seeing over here is what's known as a midden. In other words, can you see the dark soil right there? The soil is dark because of the organic material left behind by the ancients. This is a village site. And the ancients lived here. They used the sea right here as a source of their food. And what we're looking over here is the remains, the discards of the food that they ate. Look at this right over here. Now the interesting thing about this sand dune here, which is deteriorating, it is sloughing away history, revealing itself to us, unbeknownst to almost everyone walking by here. Let me show you something very interesting. Right here, directly ahead of us, right over there is a cluster of shells. That little pile, you can see it's a little cluster, is a place where an ancient at one time sat or squatted and broke open a series of shells to eat that evening. Look at this, let's, let's go in real close. Okay, there you go, there's this little cluster. And what's happening as nature is sloughing away this uh, sand dune, it's revealing itself to us. Now the fascinating thing about this site is you'll also find bones. And so if this site is studied, we can actually find out what the ancients ate at one time. We'll find bones here from birds, bones from mammals, sea life, fish, and of course, mollusks. So this is very fascinating. We can actually see what their dietary habits were. Look at this over here. Okay, let me pick this up over here. Look at this shell over here. This could very well have been opened over a thousand years ago. And this is what remains over here. These middens were essentially um, an area where a lot of disposal activity happened. In other words, the everyday refuse of their life would be ejected right up in here. Now in this area, I've counted about 50 mortars. And mortars are food processing implements. So that's another sign that ancient life once existed over here. Let me show you the clues that I found 
long this sand dune, and there are many, to let us know that ancient man once lived here. Well, friends, let me show you a fascinating discovery that I made here, which again indicates that ancient man once lived here. You see this stone right over here? It's sloughing off. You can see where it was encapsulated at one time. But what I noticed was this red element right here. Let me, let me take it out. Can you see that red element? Let me rub it here against the uh, sand dune here. Let's see. Oh, look at this, okay? This here is hematite. And this mineral, this stone was used to make paints, red paints. And so it would be crushed. It's a soft stone. It would be crushed and fat would be mixed in with this crushed stone and to form a binder. And uh, they made red paint out of this, red body paint, uh, red pictographs. Uh, you know, you could paint uh, wood. You could paint with this here. So this uh, stone, this hematite, uh, the interesting thing is there's no hematite here in a local area. So what that indicates to me is this hematite was imported here and traded by the ancients that lived here with the people that mined the hematite. Now again, you can see the shells over here. Quite fascinating. But let me show you something again right over here that I talked about earlier. See this? This is, looks like a rib bone. I'm not sure what type. Could it have been a deer? Could it have been a, a seal, a sea outer? But again, this is part of the evidence which indicates to us what the ancients over here once ate. You can look here and see dozens of different types of, let's call them seashells for lack of a better word. You'll find a lot of bones here, just like over here. And then you'll be able to paint a picture as to what the habits or the dietary habits of the people that lived here were. I can assume that probably well over 90% of their food involved life around the sea. I'll tell you, this is really a fantastic place. So let's continue along this sand dune. Let's find other evidence of ancient man. I'll tell you, this is, for me, very exciting. Well, friends, thus far we've seen three indicators of ancient life here. We've seen the shells over here. We've seen the hematite over here and we've seen a bone over there. Now let's continue further and let's see if we can find other signs of life. Well, look at this. This stone over here that rolled down, let's take a look at it. It's a very, very smooth and broken over here. This looks like what I'll call a, a hot rock. And hot rocks were used in the uh, cooking process. You can see the, uh, I guess, the fire marks right over here. And what happened with these stones is that they were placed in a fire and then often put into another container that contains some type of food to heat the food up and that's why they're called hot rocks. So let's continue. Oh my goodness, look at this right here. Uh, this here is a red abalone. Okay, you can tell by the shell that it's red right here. You can see the tint. And look at that, look at that shell. I tell you, it's, it's beautiful. friends as I was slowly walking along this sand dune looking for signs of life I was closely examining this area right here and oh my goodness hold on you see this it's shining right here let's see what this is well it's it's a black stone but uh, for a moment I was thinking this was uh, an obsidian piece because there was a little shine uh, when the sun hit it. But, oh, I see another one right here, okay. 
right over here. Do you see that? A little bit of shining right there. There you go. Can you see the glint right over here? Oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. Can you see that? You and I are seeing the same thing right over here. Let me, let me put this out over here. Look at this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is a point. This is a bird point. An arrowhead. Look at that. My goodness, this is absolutely fascinating. So this is very small, probably used for small game, as I said, uh, small birds, maybe uh, squirrels. Um, this is really fascinating. And again, this here obsidian is a trade item. There's no obsidian in the local area. So the natives here probably traded abalone for this over here. I'll tell you, this is fantastic. Well, our search continues, and one of the things I noticed is, uh, look at those stones right over here, a series of them right over there. Uh, let's examine them. They're different types of stone over here. Uh, look at this piece over here, nothing special. Now this looks like it was fire uh, blackened. Uh, same with that one. And uh, this one too, let's take a look at it. Well, this is interesting, look at this. Wow, this is as smooth as silk and it has a curve to it. Now look at this over here. Oh my goodness, this looks like at one time it was a portable mortar, okay, like a bowl where food was prepared, made out of stone. You can see it's broken right over here. So, my goodness, yes, I would say that this was uh, some type of cooking implement, possibly a portable mortar. You can see the concave shape of it, and uh, as I mentioned, this here is as smooth as silk. So there you have it. You know, a lot of this evidence that we're looking at is very subtle, almost impossible uh, to spot unless you know what you're looking for, what you're trying to find, what you're trying to discover. And in this case, we're trying to find evidence of ancient man living at this site. I'll tell you, there's a lot of evidence here. It's all around us. You know, the fascinating thing that I see as I'm looking at these sand dunes, which are about, I'd say, as a minimum, as a minimum are 15 feet high, but probably more like 20, 20 feet high. And as we look at this sand dune, we can see these strata upon strata of shells. And I'll tell you what, it took hundreds, it took thousands of years to form these layers to be this high, 20 feet high, thousands of years. Now we know from an excavation here in this area that the oldest evidence of man living here is approximately 9,000 years ago. So this gives you an indication how old this site is. Look at that, there's a strata right there. Look at that large strata right over there. It's quite amazing when you think about it. Now, one important thing I wanted to mention is why was ancient man right here? Well, right over there is a river. <laughs> Water was a source of life. So over here, they had everything they needed. They had fresh water supply, and they had the ocean over here, which abounds with life. So life here was sustainable. Life here was good. The temperature in this area is very moderate, very pleasant living conditions. I wanted to show you another cluster right over here. Yeah, you see this little cluster? And what I find so fascinating is right there at that very spot, ancient man once squatted and sat and prepared their food right here at that very spot. That's their little pile, just as if you were, um, I guess, eating a bunch of peanuts and all the shells are around you or in front of you, sitting there in a pile, and that's what this is. So we continue our search over here, and uh, look at this. This looks very interesting over here. Let's take a look. Sling here, it uh, probably sloughed off from there. Uh, let's see what this is over here. 
very smooth over here. And oh my goodness, this here is a food preparation stone. It's a grinding stone. The first thing I noticed was, look at this right over here. What the natives would do is they would take a smooth stone like this here and use it for food preparation in a grinding method this way. But what they needed to do was to be able to grip the stone so they would leave these telltale marks. Here's one right here chipped away. Look at this, here's another one chipped away right there. And there's actually right over here an indentation and right over here an indentation. Okay, so two of them. So take a look at this. To grab the stone, here's my thumb right here. And my little finger back here. And then look, right, right over here, there's a chip right here and a chip right there. So the stone was held this way, right over here, gripping here, and where my little finger is, right over here. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is quite fascinating. Again, quite innocuous. If you didn't know what you were looking at, you would figure this is a regular stone. But the hand, or I should say the finger holds, are a dead giveaway. Here, and right right there, and two right over here. So there you go. This is how the stone was held. And uh, another sign is right over here. It's extremely smooth from a rubbing action. Very smooth right over here. Very ingenious. And of course, look at this. It really fits in a palm of your hand so you could get a, a good grind, a good push to it. Very fascinating. Well, we're going to continue trekking along here and let's see if we can find some more evidence of ancient man. Well, we continue our search and as you can tell, look how dark and rich the soil is. It's quite beautiful. Let me show you. There's the white sand right here. And of course, you can see how dark it is. Very beautiful. And, uh, yeah, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to look at this over here. So there it is. It's sloughing away. Look at that stone right there. Let's uh, take a real close uh, look at it over here. Let's let's see. Look at that. Okay, so there, there's where it was hidden uh, for thousands of years. Because look how high this is over here. This is a layer upon layer of generation and uh, millennium here so let's let's take a look at this real real close oh my goodness you know what I think this is this is a, a combination uh, mono and pestle very very smooth here and right at the end I could see what they call uh, strike marks something was being hit over here and uh, I can feel over here so what this could have been used uh, like this here, see, in this manner. So the food was crushed inside a mortar like this. So this is a pestle uh, used for pounding action, and the other stone that we saw was used for grinding action. Two different types of stone, uh, two different types of uh, configuration. Now, what we need to do is, along this area, is uh, find a mortar and uh, let's take a look to see if this uh, pestle here uh, would work in that mortar so let's let's continue our search over here and uh, let's see if we can find the second half of the pestle which would be the mortar mortar and pestle um, I see something over here uh, let me come in real close. Um, it looks circular. I don't know what it is. Right over here. Let's let's take a look. Oh, look. Okay. All right. Very smooth over here. Nothing special. But uh, let's look at this over here. Oh, this is very nice. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This here is known as a scraper. This was fashioned by ancient man as a cutting tool. You can actually see right here the percussion marks where they broke it away. Right here, you can see it right here. You can see the percussion marks uh, to create a knife. 
create a cutting edge. And look at this, you can see it right over here. There you go. Can you see that? So this is another indication that the ancient man uh, once lived over here. Uh, quite fascinating. Um, so now we have, uh, let's see, this is probably the fifth clue that ancient man once lived here. So let me show you this unique discovery I've made here as I'm walking along these sand dunes and the beach. Look at this directly in front of us. Can you see that right over there? Those are two mortars. Uh, let's go down there and uh, take a look at them and examine them. And this is really uh, quite interesting considering all the things that we've found to tie in ancient life at this site. This over here is definitely a home run, finding those two mortars. So let's go down there. So there you have it. I tell you, these are quite ancient, quite ancient. Let's get in real close. There you can, you can see right over here and then right over there. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, let me get in real close. Right over here, this inside, right here in the central hollow area, it's very, very smooth. It's smooth because of the pounding action. But you can tell this is very old because look at the rough nodules here. So this has not been used for a long, long time. But uh, let me show you how the uh, uh, pestle works. Now we found the pestle right around that corner. And what I did is I brought it here with me to show you how a pestle would work. So what I have here is the pestle in my hand. It's, it's circular in shape and you can see over here the strike marks. But this is how it would work, somewhat like this, crushing the food that was in there. Now, this is how it would look right there. This is, now oftentimes they're way longer, so this pestle more than likely did not belong to this mortar. It probably belonged to a, a smaller one. Uh, what I'm going to do is, let's take a look over here. This is a smaller one. So, uh, yeah, this fits in there perfectly, uh, but still a little too short uh, because of the sides over here. But generally speaking, the food would be pounded this way. Uh, quite fascinating. Uh, what I'm going to do is take this here and actually put it back right over there into the exact spot that uh, I first noticed it. Now one of the things I want to mention is that uh, we've observed a lot of things over here. Uh, but our journey here is not about finding things. It's about observing things, uh, discovering new meanings, uh, gaining knowledge. Everything that we've seen over here is left at exactly the same spot where it was noticed. Yes, this is an educational series. Hopefully it'll open a portal to your mind so that you can uh, seek further knowledge. This is what happened to me. Well, friends, before we leave, let me show you one more fascinating thing. Directly ahead of us, right over there, is a configuration of boulders that actually has a meaning. I read a report that was over 100 years old where a native was interviewed, and this native said that my people used to live near a place where the old man looked out to the sea. And right here, from this spot, I was able to see this configuration of boulders that looks 
like a person sitting in a chair looking out to the ocean. So it's directly ahead of us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom on in and you tell me what you think. sitting down looking out to the sea. It's a very rough character of that symbol of someone sitting down looking out to the sea. But right over there where that area is located, you'll see a series of rocks right over here. And right at that location, I was able to find uh, another mortar, um, abalone shells, and a place where they were actually cooking their food. You could see the fire blackened rocks in this little shelter area. And so on a ceiling, it was all blackened. So there you have it, the old man that looked out to the sea. This whole area, this whole area right here, there's the mortars right there, uh, abounds with evidence of ancient life. And so for people walking here, enjoying nature, have absolutely no idea that under their feet there was a culture, a civilization that lived here as far back as 9,000 years ago. And that's truly fascinating.